For vast majority of the general public, they do have a doubt regarding what are the laboratory abnormalities are commonly seen in the patients with COVID-19. And the common laboratory abnormalities who got infected with COVID-19 with severe viral load or milder form of disease or maybe the patients who got hospitalized. So I'm going to give you the list here. There will be a lymphopenia and lymphopenia is more commonly seen in the severe form of a disease and it is very rarely seen in the milder as well as less severe form of disease or initial form of the disease. And lymphopenia has been reported in up to 90% of the patients who are hospitalized with COVID-19, which means those who develop severe illness because of COVID. There will be elevated amino transaminases levels. These are also seen in hospitalized individuals and those who got uh, moderate to severe form of disease. And there were elevated lactate dehydrogenase levels and elevated inflammatory markers can be seen at any stage of the disease, whether it is mild, moderate or severe, like increase in the levels of ferritin, C-reactive protein, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, increase in the interleukin levels are also seen in vast majority of the individuals. We do consider it as cytokine strong. And there are abnormalities which have been identified in the coagulation testing also in majority of the patients who got infected with a severe form of COVID-19 and elevated uh, procalcitonin levels and elevated troponin levels have also been reported but elevated troponin levels are seen only in 20% of the cases who are hospitalized because of COVID-19 and the degree of these abnormalities actually tend to correlate with the disease severity. So it is not compulsory that all the levels are elevated in all the individuals based on the severity, based on the strain, based on the immune status, based on the comorbid conditions. So there are so many factors which are present to increase the laboratory levels of these items. So there's a reason Elevation of any of these, you can consider that you may be affected by COVID-19 if you are not done your RT-PCR. So it should be confirmed by RT-PCR testing immediately once you see any of these levels which are elevated because of a random blood test which you are conducted not because of COVID. But any individuals after they got positive by means of RT-PCR, even I recommend all of them to go for the complete blood test with the following list what you can see on the screen. So because it is very much important to know what is the inflammatory marker status in your body that will actually correlate with the disease severity and progression of the disease. And once you can identify the positivity in your RT-PCR as well as elevation of all these markers, it is pretty much important to consult your pulmonologist or a physician to prevent further progression of the disease and also it is pretty much important to start the medication as early as possible once you got tested positive. Okay, so there are a number of laboratory abnormalities have been reported along with the list whatever I have mentioned till now including high fibrinogen, and D-dimers are elevated in vast majority of the patients who are above the age of 40 to 45. But uh, these days, uh, we cannot actually say that in which individuals it is becoming severe, in which individuals uh, it is uh, seeing in a milder form of a disease because the mutant strains are the one who are considered to be the main culprit for these inflammatory markers to get elevated and uh, the progression of the disease severity also. So D-dimers are very, very important for you to check. D-dimers should not elevate. If they are elevated, you have to consult uh, your physician immediately and you have to start your blood thinners as early as possible because it may predispose to the condition called as pulmonary embolism. And this pulmonary embolism is considered to be the leading cause of death or mortality in the COVID-19 hospitalized individuals. So it is pretty much important for you to maintain the normal inflammatory markers, especially you have to check the D-dimers levels all the time. So there's a reason you have to repeat these tests for three to four days when you got infected with this COVID-19. Okay, so D-dimer and mild prolongation of the prothrombin time can be seen in vast majority of the patients and activated partial thromboplastin time is also elevated in vast majority of the patients. 
and abnormal coagulation studies are mainly used to monitor the clinical status and also help to determine the level of care for the COVID-19 patients who got hospitalized and very high D-dimer is actually associated with high mortality guys. There's a reason I'm repeating the sentence again and again related to the high D-dimer level. So you have to keep the eye on this D-dimer levels whenever you got positive, whenever you are going for the blood test. So don't think that the physician or a doctor wantedly asking you to test again and again. There is a reason if a physician or a pulmonologist is asking you to test all these inflammatory markers for every two to three days because only by this we would be able to guess the severity of the infection based on that the treatment protocol may change. There's a reason the life is pretty much important when compared to that of anything at this stage. That's why go with the proper testing. Take care of you as well as your family members properly and make sure that you follow all the guidelines whatever is recommended by your physician or a pulmonologist okay so thank you take care